Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jayla. For those of you who don't know me yet, but I promise after this video, you will go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day so far. It is June 1st. Y'all, something about June, besides fucking rent being due, feels magical. Like, it just feels, I feel an energy shift. I just know that June is going to be amazing for us. Like, I just, I really do. I absolutely love the first of the month besides my uterus and my vagina protesting because I am not pregnant. Um, the first of the month just feels really inspirational for me. I don't really plan my life out really far in advance. Like, you cannot text me on Monday and make plans for Saturday. I will text you back and I will say I do not plan my life out that far in advance so you could try again on Friday night or Saturday morning but I just can't commit to shit like that that's really far that's like a month for me like no so yeah a new month just kind of feels like a happy new year to me like every month on the first I'm like happy new year because it's just a new month for new goals new habits it's like a clean slate last month that's a dub. We trying again this month. I really do love the first. The hustlers are out hustling. The nine to fivers are getting paid. You pull up at the stoplight. They got them man in them suits. It's hot as hell outside. They selling incense and newspapers and shit. Do y'all remember that? Coming from a girl that can't sit the hell down, I love the get up and go. Like hustling has literally been my life since I can remember. I've always been a hustler. I feel like all hustlers are not entrepreneurs, but all entrepreneurs are hustlers. Like, let me let me say that one more time. All hustlers are not entrepreneurs, but all entrepreneurs are hustlers. Hustlers are those people who are just never going to be broke. Like, they will sell anything like hoverboards, eyelashes, weave, goddamn coochie, anything. Hustlers will sell anything like quick flip, fast money, I got to get this money. I'm getting up every day, chase the bag, chase the bag. Entrepreneurship to me is a little bit more like passion based. You know, it's something that you grow something. It's kind of like your baby. Like you being an entrepreneur, you have this business and you water it and you put money into it and uh, the outcome might not be great or the reward might not be big but like this is your passion so you're gonna water it put hella money into it hella time into it entrepreneurship is literally kind of like having a baby but a business and I know in this day and age society has really separated the nine to fivers from the entrepreneurs and has kind of glorified entrepreneurship like working for the man and nine to five and being unhappy but the truth is like Everybody not unhappy at their nine to five. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Some people feel comfortable moving up in a company. Some people work better when someone else is telling them what to do. Some people work well with others. Some people enjoy the stability of a nine to five financial and schedule wise. And a lot of people just flat out don't want to be fucking business owners. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't would never want to force nobody to be a business owner because even the people sometimes that want to be a business owner now don't even know what they're doing. So different strokes for different folks. I wholeheartedly believe that you can follow your dreams and live a fulfilling life with your nine to five as long as you feel fulfilled in that job, in that career, in that field. Like I could never look down on somebody that worked nine to five shit. It's a balance. We need them the same way they need us. And when I say us, I'm talking about entrepreneurs. Me personally, my mind is a bit too chaotic to work a nine to five. I tend to get bored. I, but that is because my brain is more creative. I need to constantly be challenged all the time or I'm going to take a fucking nap. OK, I will go to sleep at your job on your clock if I don't feel challenged I'm telling you, I'm not telling a lie, okay? I'm not telling a lie. But some people have more logical brains where this is what I need to do today. This is my task. This is the list of things that I have to get done. And this is just what I'm going to do. I'm going to clock out and I'm going to go home. Like some people, like people's brains just work differently. From early age, I knew I was a hustler. It's always been in me. In middle school, I started selling these feather earrings. I put some beads on them. I wrapped this little feather trim around them, giving very much Jamestown settlement. But I had all the girls and all the teachers wearing these feather earrings. Like, that, it was crazy. That's how I knew it was in me. 
So in middle school, that's when I really started like embracing my creativity, just starting to do stuff with my hands. I was making baby shower invitations, websites, MySpace pages, um, diaper cakes. I started making diaper cakes. I was making little videos and stuff with my friends. Girl, I found Tumblr and that was all she wrote, girl. Tumblr had my ass in a chokehold. I'm not even going to lie. That's when I realized my middle name was Aesthetic. Jayla Aesthetic Majet. That was my middle name. I love me an aesthetic, okay? So I got to high school, right? I was still doing that same stuff in like freshman, sophomore year. I started getting into graphic design. So I started editing a lot of my pictures. You know, I was definitely like a weird girl. It was like, dang, like Jayla really be editing her pictures. Like I always used to do crazy shit, girl. Like crazy stuff when I was editing my pictures. I also used to edit like report cards and stuff for people. But when I was 16, my dad got me my first job. My daddy will talk to a brick wall if it could talk back, okay? So he's chatting with the neighbor across the street who just so happens to be a manager at Foot Locker. He's like, yeah, you know, my daughter, she uh, 16, you know, she's looking for a job. Put in my application, went through the interview process, boom, he hired me. Of course, he loved me. Like, who don't fucking love me? So uh, that was my first job at 16, working at Foot Locker. Nobody could tell me anything. I was that girl. I put on that little referee uniform. Nobody could tell me shit. But I really wasn't making that much money at Foot Locker. Like, I was making below minimum wage, which I think I was making like $5.25 or something plus commission. And I was just a part-timer when I first started. So I really wasn't getting no hours. And plus, I my time was limited. I could only work after I got out of school, which was at like 2 o'clock. So usually I would get to work at like 3. Junior year of high school was cool or whatever. But my senior year, my senior year, sis, that was really when I was in my bag. I was really, really eating the girls up. Okay, so listen. The year is 2013. I'm riding down Granby Street. I go to Granby High School. And my 94 Acura Integra, green with green rims. My brothers even put speakers in that bitch so I could just, you could hear me coming. I, I, I'm telling you, I was that girl, okay? <laughs> and I moved up to like an assistant manager position at Foot Locker. Girls started leaving class early and everything. I remember I, my algebra teacher, his name was Mr. Lindsay. And I'd be like, all right, Mr. Lindsay, you already know it's my time to go. I had to be to work at 2 o'clock. School went over till 2.30. I was out of there. Every, all, every time I had to work, I was gone. Mind you, I graduated with honors. Anyway, I also picked up another job, Bahama Breeze. It was in the same mall that I was working at. So I would literally just clock out of Foot Locker and then go straight to Bahama Breeze. I'm telling you, I was about my paper with no Adderall. Can you believe it? Well, that job didn't really last a long time. Um, uh, I got fired because I told the kitchen manager that he was not my daddy. And these are still Fendi facts. OK, you are not my dad. And this that's when I also realized that, like, I can't work for everybody. It was so funny because it was like a you can't fire me because I quit type of moment. And it was the first time I ever got fired from a job. But I definitely so I cried. But like it was still really fuck that job. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, y'all not finna sit up here and pay me this much money and then talk to me all types of crazy. Like, I really chose me at the tender age of 17. But that was OK, because like I said, I had moved up at Foot Locker. I had figured out a way to make more money at Foot Locker by flipping shoes. And that was my hustle. I became the shoe plug. So that was my hustle at work. But when I was at school, I was also starting to like dive more into my creative side, like um, my graphic design. I was on a billboard when I was 16, like Jayla, Majette, future graphic artist. And because I had me some coins, girl, I was running it up in Sephora. I was able to buy makeup. I started taking my own makeup seriously. I started doing other people's makeup. I used to practice all the time on JoJo. And uh, I just remember watching YouTube. I used to watch You Love Megs all the time because she was just this pretty brown chocolate girl and her makeup was always so flawless. And, uh, that was where I, my love of makeup and my love of YouTube started. And I was editor of yearbook. So I was really happy and grateful that like during my time in high school, I was able to explore 
so many different options to kind of know like where I wanted to head next. I don't know which direction led me to the fucking military, but I went the wrong way. Hello, yes, sir. Um, may I speak to Mr. Sam? Hello, yes, Mr. Sam. Um, I know what I have said. I have remember what I have signed up for, but um, I changed my mind. Can you uh please turn me loose, please? Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Oh my gosh, I had came such a long way, but bitch, I went the wrong way. The military is what really showed me that my mind really needs to be challenged. And remember when I was talking about going to sleep, girl, that's what I was talking about. And I'm surprised I never got paperwork for it. But for basic training, tech school, your girl was in there slump de dumpty Like, I realized that I was so bored in the military. And the way the military works is like, everything someone tells you what to do, Someone literally writes your whole day, your whole schedule, your whole job for you. Like there was no, I didn't even have to think for myself or anything. It was like somebody just thought it for me and I was just this robot. Like I was literally so unhappy. So I got out the military, do not ask how. And I moved to Japan with my now ex. This was all when I was like 19 years old. Yes, I know girl smoking what? dick yeah yes i'm telling y'all i've literally always been that person where if i'm not happy somewhere i am literally getting the whole fuck like i cannot stay here i will lose my mind i will cry i will throw a temper tantrum i cannot do it so moved to japan um and uh, i this is when i embarked on my youtube journey because uh, i had cut all my hair off i had no stylist in japan and i just started making youtube videos because everybody would ask me like jayla what are you doing and i just felt like it was easier for me to send them the link versus me like explaining it to a whole bunch of different people so that is how like my youtube channel started well in the meantime in between time i needed to make some money and everybody knows that as a military wife finding a job on a military base is really not like the easiest thing to do because the base is so small all the jobs are kind of dead in I had one friend that worked at base lodging I had another friend that worked at uh, a burrito spot on base and then I I me, I worked at the daycare but before I found a job at the daycare, I told my dad that I wanted to start doing makeup, like freelance makeup. And uh, he transferred me $2,500. He told me to go to Ikea. Me and my ex went on this dummy mission to go get everything for my studio. And it was also like my YouTube studio and it was like my makeup studio. I had business cards and everything. Like I was too legit, right? Then I realized that I like makeup, but I don't really like people like that. Like I could not get with doing people's makeup. And it was just because the way I wanted them to look wasn't the way they wanted to look. So I had like some people where it was good, but the money just wasn't consistent enough. There wasn't enough things to do for me to only solely do makeup. So I got the job at the daycare, the CDC. Girl, child, when I tell you that them kids ran me so raggedy, I really, really, really hated that job. That was the only job really I've ever had in my life where I cried every day and I hated it so much. I was so unhappy there. It wasn't like all bad because I was the dramatic arts teacher. So I would teach the kids, you know, about editing and about video and we would make little skits and things like that. And it was really, really fun when we did that. But like the paperwork side of it, the actually dealing with the kids side of it you know I really did not enjoy that so I got a job at Chili's on base I was making $13 an hour plus all of my tips and when I tell you that was the closest thing I've ever gotten to some stripper money I am not lying girl I was actually making really good money there just because I was still able to keep all of my tips and some days I will have you know $400 $500 nights I really enjoyed the fact that I could clock in, do my four hours, collect my money and go home. And in the meantime, in between time, I was still, you know, I was starting to get a little somewhere, somewhere on YouTube. And I realized that when I went to Chili's, I was just thinking about videos. And I was like, damn. Then I started calling out of Chili's. I was like, damn. Once I started making around like the same type of money that I made at Chili's on YouTube, I was like, okay, I really got to think about this because now Chili's is starting to get in my way. My day job starting to get in my way. Like, wow, this YouTube shit really jumping. Like I always used to say, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I got this tweet 
that's on my Facebook header that says I'm going to be famous and it's dated from like 2011 and I just always kind of this is just always kind of what I felt like I should have been doing you know so the minute my day job started getting in the way of my dreams by Chili's I remember like it was yesterday I had a puff I had on a black, my black chili shirt. I had on some blue jeans. I was so ready to go in there and put in my two weeks. Like, I was so ready. And uh, it just felt right. Like, it felt like the right thing to do. I felt like I was trusting myself. I felt like I was believing in myself. When I went in there and I told them people that I was quitting this job to go home and do YouTube videos, they thought I was batshit crazy. Like, Jayla, are you serious? I'm like, yes, I'm very serious. I didn't tell nobody that I was doing it. I didn't ask nobody like, hey, do you think I should? I just kind of did it when it felt right. Because only I feel like you would know when it feels right. Whenever, you know, it's like, okay, this is becoming hard to juggle. So I have to make a decision. You know, am I going to pick my dreams? Am I going to go out on a whim? Am I going to trust myself? Or am I going to live in fear and just kind of like stay here because I'm scared, you know? Hey, 2 Chains got a lot of questionable lyrics, but he said, believe in yourself. Who else going to believe in you? That's like the realest shit. Who else going to believe in you? You have to have so much faith and so much trust in yourself because this is not going to come from anything external. Like this is going to come from within this drive, this confidence that you need, because as soon as you try to tell someone what you're doing, first of all, Switching from a nine to five, a very stable job to going out on a whim and following your dreams and, you know, entrepreneurship, hustling, all that other stuff. It takes a lot of courage. And uh, a lot of people will speak fear into your plans. So when you tell someone like, yeah, girl, I want to quit my day job and I want to follow my dreams. You know, some people will speak fear into your plans because of jealousy, because they're upset that they can't do it. They don't have the courage to do it. They don't have the talent to do it, the means to do it. And some people will speak fear into your plans out of love. Like they think that they're protecting you. Oh, I really don't want to see you, you know, down bad. I don't want to see you hurt. Like what if this doesn't work? So they just much rather you stay somewhere where you're comfortable. And that's the issue. Like you're just too comfortable. And all growth is uncomfortable. It's gonna feel like you are holding your breath until shit gets like some type of normalcy. Like it's literally going to be one of the most uncomfortable things because it's just you are not only going out on a whim, following your dreams, trusting yourself, but you're changing lifestyles. Like a lot of people don't understand that when you go from the nine to five to the entrepreneurship, you change your entire lifestyle. You change your mindset. There's just so many things that are different from being an entrepreneurship, it's not just about following your dreams. It's about pursuing them, doing them. It's literally about taking risk. Like, I don't know if this shit gonna work, but I'm about to fucking try. You cannot think with constraints. You cannot pursue things with limits. Everything is possible. Anything is possible. Literally, like the sky's the limit. It's like, I could be the next Bill Gates. And it's people like, wow, that's crazy. Like, why would you think that you would be able to do that? Like, that's like one in two million. Yeah, well, why can't I be that one? Somebody, somebody going to be it. Why can't it be me? It's not easy at all. I hate when people think that being an entrepreneur is the easy way out. It is not. You trade in those 40-hour work weeks for 80-hour work weeks. You trade someone telling you what to do. Now, all of a sudden, you have to find inspiration to figure out what you're going to do. Like, it requires so much more willpower, brain power. But it's so worth it when you start seeing yourself in places that you never seen yourself, meeting people that you thought you'd never meet, being next to people that you thought you'd never be next to. But the sacrifice, you have to be willing to make the sacrifices. You have to ask yourself, am I disciplined enough? Do I know how to set boundaries? Do I have a schedule? Am I financially sound for a bad month? Do I love what I'm doing? Am I willing to sacrifice all of my free time? Because you will have no more free time. Do I understand that there is no separation between work and home life? Do I trust myself? Am I ready to change my lifestyle? These are all questions that you have to ask yourself and be prepared to say yes to 
because the lifestyle change is is that different it's like you are in constant grind mode like nobody around you understands what you're doing and they don't see your vision so to them it just kind of looked like you just you know out here living your best life driving around they don't understand that everything is literally so integrated like for instance when I do my makeup in the morning it could just look like to my neighbors that oh this girl just do her makeup every morning no I'm filming you know like anytime I want to go to brunch or I want to do something with my friends I'm like I hope you bitches is cute because I'm bringing my camera and it's like a lot of people see that you don't have a day job so it's like let me call her I just feel like breathing on the phone I want to go to brunch I need a brunch date she's free like on everybody's off day they go to you because you make your own schedule and it's almost like when you do that type of work your work is not really respected the same way a nine to five is respected your 1099 don't hold as much weight as their w-2 and because you make your own schedule and all your shit's flexible, people expect you to bend it. It's like you literally have to put your foot down. Being a work from home mom and a stay at home mom at the same time was the the biggest piece of bullshit that I ever had to deal with in my whole life. Like, I'm not even kidding. It was so it was so bad because because I worked in the house, I felt like a lot of times my work wasn't respected the same way as me being out the house. Like I was always available, you know, oh, I'll be back right quick. I'll do this right quick. Oh, can I just borrow this right quick, real quick, right quick. All those right quicks add up. I was always home. People always thought they could just stop by. Neighbors, friends. It's like, people, I'm trying to work here. It just really just felt like, it wasn't respected. And honestly, for a long time, I wasn't the type of person to speak up for myself. Not no more, bitch. I'm gonna have to call you back. But back then, it was a it was a real struggle for me. It's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. I feel like to a lot of people who are natural born entrepreneurs, it comes naturally. Just people that kind of think outside the box, people that always kind of ask questions when they were younger, like, why do we have to do it this way and we can do it this way? You know, that's always kind of been me. You know, black people always thought it was disrespectful. I was a disrespectful child all because I used to ask why or whatever. <laughs> anyway, the people that wanted an answer to a question and didn't ask anybody, they just kind of went and found the answer or they figured some stuff out by themselves. That's always been me. And I always feel like that's like the number one red flag when I see someone that wants to start a new business venture, but they're asking way too many questions. You know, those people on Facebook that be asking the most Googleable questions, like getting on my damn nerves. Do anybody know what time Walmart open? Though that is not like, it's like, you're not ready. You know, you have to be able to go out, go get it, not sit and wait for somebody to comment back on this status and tell you how to get your LLC. You Google it. What the fuck? That get up and go, that I'm just going to do this shit is what's really going to separate you from the rest. So instead of waiting, you're now doing. And the more you do, the more progress you make. If I sound like I'm fussing at you, boo, I am so sorry. I just get so frustrated when I see people that have so much potential and they're the only thing that's holding themselves back. We have gifts, we have talents, we have something to offer the world. And you never know how big or what type of impact you're going to make until you just do it. Let me relax because y'all got me up here sounding like that damn Everest Community College commercial. And that's really not what I'm trying to give. I'm not trying to bully you into doing it. I'm just trying to get you to get out of your head if you stuck in it. It's so many people out here that have so much potential, but they live in fear because they're scary. If you're one of these people, you got to ask yourself, what am I afraid of? And to be honest with you, a lot of people are afraid of success. It's crazy. A lot of people don't feel that they're worthy. A lot of people don't believe that it could be them. A lot of people don't think that it's in them. And for some people, that fear is instilled in them. Maybe you got really traditional parents and they only believe in nine to five. They don't believe in asking questions. They always told you what to do your entire life. So you don't even know how to do anything for yourself. Your parents kind of always played it safe. They saw this spark in you and they put that shit out immediately because they know that people that are different in this world don't have it as easy as the people that just conform. 
So maybe you were brainwashed and that's why you're scared. Whatever it is, whatever fear you have, as long as you still got that spark, it's not hard to find that light again. I am, I'm going to tell y'all some real shit. So look, put this whole thing into perspective for y'all. When I first got pregnant, something felt so different about my pregnancy. It felt spiritual. It felt very deep to me. I mean, I'm obviously I'm a deep bitch, but there was something different about me being pregnant. Everybody that I ever known had had a hospital birth, medicated, epidural me, that shit hurt, girl, fuck that. Like, and I literally went the opposite way. Something told me like, Jayla, you can do this. You were made to do this. Your body can do this. And so I literally, everything that I had knew, I went against it everything. I didn't know anybody that had a natural birth. I didn't know anybody that had a home birth. I didn't know anybody that breastfed. And everything that I had ever seen on TV was the opposite of what I experienced. I looked at birth as traumatic. I looked at it as this is going to fucking hurt. I looked at it as I need a doctor's help. I looked at it as that because that is what society had instilled in me. We took a hypnobirthing class and that class retrained my mind I unlearned everything that was instilled in me from a little girl I'm talking shit so deep rooted all my siblings seeing all my siblings with big eight ounce formula bottles type shit like I unlearned all of that every traumatic birth scene I had seen on the movie I forgot about it it's almost like that Spongebob episode where he was a waitress, y'all know what I'm talking about? And he literally brained up all that shit and forgot his fucking name. That is what I did. Your mind is so powerful. You can unlearn and retrain your mind to do anything. And for those of you who don't know, my birth was unmedicated. I had Jackson on my bed at home. He breastfed, latched wonderfully. This dream birth that I wanted so bad was literally now my reality. So crazy to think about. Literally so crazy to think about. Everybody thought I was fucking crazy. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm finna do this shit. I'm finna show all (laughs) y'all. Wow, that's crazy. I don't know if any of you guys have ever read my Instagram bio or my Twitter bio, but it's a Drake lyric that says somewhere between psychotic and iconic. And uh, I love that line so much because people are gonna think you're so crazy. Like whenever you come up with this idea that people can't see, People can't vision. They're going to think you're psychotic. Wow, this girl is crazy. She wants to have a natural birth. Wow, this girl wants to do YouTube videos instead of having a real job. Like, wow. Jayla had long hair her whole life. Why would she do that? Why would she cut all her hair off? Like, just look at that. And the iconic part comes in where the shit fucking works. It works. It worked out. And it's like, damn, nobody ever imagined that. Nobody ever saw that. But look at the outcome. And now you're the first. And now you're the fucking goat. And it's just iconic. Now you're Oprah, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. You're the inspiration story. You're the fucking blueprint to show people like this shit can happen. I can make this. You can make this shit happen. And remember, everybody can't see it. Everybody can't see your vision. So there's no need to announce it. There's no need to go asking for validation, telling anybody, announcing your next moves, things like that. And I don't know if y'all listen to J. Cole. I'm not talking about new J. Cole. I'm talking about old J. Cole, Dollar and Dream J. Cole, Sideline Story, Friday Night Lights J. Cole. He said, if they don't know your dreams, then they can't shoot them down. And I never let that leave me ever. From the time I heard it when I was in goddamn ninth grade, never let that leave me. Also, sit with bosses, sit with winners. I'm telling you, the conversations are different. Find people that think like you, that are like-minded, you know, that have the same mindset as you. That saying of it's not what you know, it's who you know, it's it's real life. (laughs) And also when you talk to people that have this like glass ceiling and their mind just can't expand, you know, maybe to the size of yours, the conversations are not going to be productive to you. It's probably going to be about gossip. They're not going to be able to feel you. You're going to feel like talking to them is a waste of time. And then you have to also understand that you can't take everybody with you. You know, I know you want your best friend to be happy, successful, but people got to want it for themselves. So right now you worry about you. You map that shit out. You write that shit out. You give yourself goals. You give yourself deadlines. You hold yourself accountable. 
Every day you work towards it. I don't give a, I don't care if it's something little, but you start off with the seed and then you plant it and then you water it a little bit every day. Okay, come back, water it, come back, water it. Okay, wow, my shit ain't sprouted yet. Okay, I'm gonna still keep coming back, water it. No, I don't want it. And before you know it, your shit sprout. It's like, okay, damn, like I got me a little, I got me a little sprout here. And before you know it, you got a whole plant and that shit start to blossom and you got flowers and you pat yourself in the back you like oh shit I got me some flowers now and you keep watering it and you keep nurturing it and before you know it you look up and you have an entire garden and whole time you was just comfortable with this one little flower because that's all you did you planted one seed you just wanted one flower and now your cup is overflowing you have an entire garden it's June 1st halfway through the year what you gonna do dream it and then real life it. And remember, stop asking Googleable questions on Facebook. You bitches are very aggravating. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoy these type of videos. These like podcast style sit down voiceover videos. I absolutely adore doing them. So if you guys have more topics, y'all want to hear me ramble for another 30 minutes about something while watching me put the same makeup on my same face, then let me know. The pleasure's all mine. I'm really hoping that June feels as magical and is magical for all of you as I feel like this is going to be for me. I hope that this month is filled with peace, love, happiness, prosperity. I hope that this month is just filled with opportunity. I just, I don't know. I feel it. You know, I feel like a shift. So hopefully I'm right. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.